As an IBCLC, you are the go-to guru for all things breastfeeding, and you should be, like a human encyclopedia, but with a warmer touch. But are you fully prepared to support parents who are pumping? Today, we're gonna to talk about the top five questions that will come up when you're supporting pumping parents and a few ideas on how to deal with them and how we can help you support pumping parents better. A lot of the videos here on our YouTube channel are geared toward moms. And if you're a mom watching this, feel free to send this to your favorite lactation professional because there are some really wonderful IBCLCs out there who are providing great pumping support and we love them. But there's a lot who just don't know. So send this to someone if you think it can help. Okay. The first one is definitely around flange sizing. <laughs> this is a popular topic in the lactation world at the moment, both in the professional realms and between moms. And we're seeing a lot of advancements, a lot of new products, a lot of trying and figuring out and ideas. And flange sizing really is an art. And I wish there was a number that I could give you that says measure the nipple and add two millimeters and we're good to go. It just doesn't quite work that way. As an IBCLC, as a lactation professional, it's your job to really understand how the breast shield and flange works with a breast. And understanding how it works can help you then create a plan and a sizing recommendation and troubleshoot problems with individual clients. Because you'll know if you've been practicing at all for any amount of time that we see a wide variety of nipples, areolas, breasts, situations, milk supplies. And so a one size fits all phalanging doesn't really work. Phalanging? Is that a new verb we're using? It's not. <laughs> And then on top of sizing, we have so many new products on the market and they all function differently. Not only that, but they alter the performance of the pump that you're using. And this is something that I love, really the science behind breast pumps. And if you're franken pumping, if you're adding different parts to different pumps, it affects the performance, the suction, the way that it works and the safety of the pump. And so these are all important things to really understand as a lactation professional, because you're in charge of helping with this. We actually developed an entire module on flange sizing for professionals in our professionals course. There's only three modules in the course and it's an 11 hour course. So it's like three and a half hours of flange sizing information on there. And it's taught by Jessica Anderson, who's another IBCLC who specializes really in flange sizing. She's done this with thousands of moms. And she actually is really well gifted in sizing for wearable pumps, which is adding another layer of difficulty because now we can't see anything. <laughs> so it's a really interesting course. It's one of my favorite little parts of our training that we have for professionals. And that's where we really dive into stuff so you can understand what's happening because I can guarantee you will get this question. Number two, I can almost guarantee that you will get questions about low pumping output. And when we <laughs> dive into this, this is a complex issue because sometimes it can be related to low milk supply and sometimes it's not. As a professional, it's your job to kind of figure out what's happening. And as a lactation professional, you've been trained in milk supply in, in dealing with the complexities there. But when you add in a breast pump to it, now we also have to determine, is the pump functioning appropriately? Is the user using it correctly? Are all of the things lining up so that we're actually seeing a good representation of the milk that is in the breast, or do we have a pumping problem? And that's where things start to get really tricky. And you gotta put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and try and figure out what is happening and where's the kink in the system. You're already probably pretty good at this, doing it in regards to feeding at the breast, latching. You know how to do this. And you were taught in your lactation training the complexities of breastfeeding, all of the things that can go wrong and how they work together. So that when you're presented with a situation, you can look at it and use your clinical hat to determine what might be going on here. And that's really our goal in our professional training is to equip you in the same way, not give you a cheat sheet for if this is happening, we do this. Although we do have some handouts and, and cheat sheet flow charts in there for you, but really helping you understand pumping, the, all the aspects that go into it so that you can put on your clinical hat and evaluate what's happening with your client on an individual basis. Number three question that you will probably get in regards to pumping as a lactation consultant is how do I create a pumping schedule? And you can go on Pinterest. In fact, I did that in a video on the YouTube channel where I went on Pinterest and looked at the schedules and you can find this beautiful little every three hour pumping schedule and it's all great and dandy. And if you're exclusively pumping or if you're supporting a client doing that, it might be a little easier because we, we're only working with one variable. 
Now we have to fit that into their schedule as well and evaluate their milk supply. It's more complex than simply saying pump every three hours for 30 minutes and you're good to go. Depends on how far postpartum they are, what their goals are, you know the drill. When you start to add feeding at the breast in on top of pumping, that's where it gets extremely tricky. And not only are we now trying to juggle a milk supply with two different variables, we're also trying to juggle a schedule. And balancing the science and the practical is one of my favorite things to do. I love stepping back and looking at the bigger picture here. We know the science behind milk supply. We understand how breast pumps work and the science behind there. And now how do we fit that practically into their lives to come up with a pumping plan that might actually work? A schedule that might actually lead them to success and meeting their goals. And those are the kind of things that I really love doing. <laughs> Pumping is an entirely separate skill to learn and you will get asked about scheduling, but mothers aren't cookies, so we can't use a cookie cutter approach. <laughs> that seems silly, but it's true. Number four, how do I keep up my milk supply when I go back to work? And I'm sure you won't get asked this all the time, but it's becoming more and more common for mothers to return to work while they're lactating. And we know if you want to keep your milk supply, if you wanna keep feeding your baby breast milk, you're gonna to have to pump. And this is an area where I've developed an entire program. And this is where I serve all of my clients. They are all working moms. They're all combining feeding at the breast and pumping. So this is kind of my specialty, but we need lactation consultants that serve all kinds of pumping parents. So that's why it's important that we give you training and information and I'm really Really excited to share what we've gathered and learned from you because I know you'll be asked this question. There's a, a pumping myth that pumps cannot sustain a full milk supply and that just is simply outdated. We know by evidence and practice and even some studies that pumps are definitely capable of maintaining a milk supply, even initiating one, but we have to use them right. We have to help clients do that. And who are they coming to for help in this area? It's not their OBGYN or their midwife or the pediatrician, it's lactation consultants. And it's really our job to understand this aspect of lactation. And I recently did a poll on LinkedIn, which is where I connect with most of my professionals on how often in lactation visits do you see someone who has a pumping question or who has a pumping concern? And almost all of them said often or almost always. There was one person that said about half the time. Nobody said never, nobody said rarely. It was just crazy to think that even in a breastfeeding consultation, you're getting asked about pumping and they have a pump and they've done it a little bit or they're using it a lot or they're using this in place of feeding for the moment. And this is a topic that I'm just really passionate about because a lot of the mothers that come and find me and join my program say that they saw a lactation consultant who was wonderful help with breastfeeding, but they couldn't answer their pumping questions. We do have many lactation consultants that are well-versed in pumping and have a lot of experience, which I'm grateful for too. But the majority of people coming to me say that they're just couldn't help them. And I want to change that. I want to help you help mothers be successful in this. Okay, and number five, this is probably the most common question that I get, I'm sure you're getting this due, is what kind of pump should I get? And not only help in choosing a pump, but really making sure that we have an appropriate pump for the situation. A lot of lactation consultants that I talk to say that the mothers already have a pump when they're coming to them. So evaluating is this appropriate for their milk supply, for their goals, for their lifestyle, can be a tricky thing to do. There are consistently new brands, new types of pumps, new features coming on the market. I'm getting breast pumps in the mail probably once a week, every other week. Like it's just crazy the amount of pumps that are hitting the market and it's not slowing down. This is a huge industry. There's a lot of potential for businesses to make money and they know that. So we're going to keep seeing new pumps <laughs> available and I know it's overwhelming, especially for IBCLCs who are very well versed in feeding at the breast issues I mean, I'm an IBCLC too. I went through the training. There was nothing on pumping, right? But we know how to do the feeding stuff. And so adding pumping education and pumping training to your arsenal is so helpful. And actually what we've built inside this course is this is my love and passion. I don't expect you to keep up on all the pumps or to <laughs> explore them all or know how they all work so that you're prepared for whatever comes into your office. You know, I have really tried to do that for you. And we actually built a breast pump library that we give alongside with our course. It's an add-on feature and it explores the pumps on the market, gives you the data that we've tested. I, with the help of an engineer, developed this little booby barometer. 
which is the fun name that my audience gave it here. But we can test breast pumps and give you objective data and help you understand what's happening. Like, let's take a look at these and see how it's different from another pump. Which types of pumps are most appropriate for which types of clients and which are not. We've compiled resources for you on videos, handouts, links, all kinds of things that you can share with your clients. So you don't have to be an expert on every pump that's out there. We can give you the information to pass along. And if you're presented with a new pump, you can check with the library. I bet there's some information there. It's always growing to me and Jessica who put this big course together are always adding new stuff. And it's really fun because I know it's a lot. I know it's overwhelming as a professional to try and support pumping parents. And where do we find up to date information? A lot of you are on my YouTube channel and commenting and sending me messages quite often <laughs> saying, hey, I need a little bit of help with this situation. Or what do you think of this new pump? Or it's a lot. And I love breast pumps. I love the science behind them. I love helping people use them. And I want to teach you as a professional how to do that too. So if you're interested, you can join the course. It's always live. So there's, we're not closing or launching or anything. I want you to have this. If you live in a country that is on the tier two or tier three list through IBCL, E, please send me an email at allison at newlittlelife.com and we will help you get access to this information because we really, we want to share it with you and so that you can support pumping clients better. So lots of information down below for you to explore and details on this course, but I hope to see you inside because we are the ones that have to support pumping parents in meeting their goals. And I would love to do it alongside of you. All right. Shoot me an email if you have any questions. Otherwise, we'll see you on the inside. Good luck.